As you'll hear in the next few minutes, all of us here at Countdown and a lot of us among the progressives had one major well-defined problem with the rally to restore sanity and or fear. And we're going to address that in a moment in our number one story, a false equivalence between what we do here and what Fox News and the like do there. But first, the overall message that the tone needs to change, that the volume needs to change, was not lost on any of us. The anger in this news hour was not an original part of it, nor was it an artifice that we added to it. It was a response to a threat to this democracy posed by Mr. Bush and now by his lineal descendants. The anger happened. It will still happen. It is not for ratings, and it is not get angry first and find a reason later. But there is an institutionalization of it that may no longer be valid. That is the worst persons in the world segment, which started, of all things, as a way of defending Tucker Carlson. Its satire and whimsy have gradually gotten lost in some anger, so in the spirit of the thing, as of right now, I'm unilaterally suspending that segment with an eye towards discontinuing it. We don't know how that works long term. We might bring it back. We might bring back something similar to it. We might kill it outright, and next week we will solicit your input. It's just that today, given the serious stuff we have to start covering tomorrow, we think it's the right time to do it short term, and then we'll see what happens. And we'll also see if anybody else on TV or radio will do something similar. As to the event, an estimated crowd of 215,000 on the National Mall on Saturday, and the costumes and the takeoff Tea Party signs were out in full force and were terrific. On stage, The Roots played house band for the acts, acts like John Legend, Kid Rock, Sheryl Crow, Father Guido Sarducci gave the benediction, the Mythbusters, Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman on hand to conduct crowd wave experiments, and one wore a tie, and one point asking 200,000 plus people to get airborne so they could get a seismic reading when they landed. Eventually, Colbert and Stewart paired on stage for their Sanity versus Fear Battle Royale in a debate setting. Mr. Stewart called out basketball legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. It's like an inventory of all my friends were at this thing to prove to Colbert there are not Muslims, but rather people who are Muslim. For his part, Colbert unleashed the media to help him keep fear alive, playing cable news clip reels, mostly consisting of sound bites from Fox News and MSNBC. The point to demonstrate the left and right going back and forth at one other, sowing fear and division. You see my face in there. I had called Brian Kilmeade of Fox News an un-American bastard after he had said all Muslims are terrorists. John Oliver, as Peter Pan came out and helped Mr. Stewart slay the fear-fronting Colbert. And then John Stewart announced he was getting sincere about the real problem. The country's 24-hour politico pundit perpetual panic conflictinator <laughs> did not cause our problems, but its existence makes solving them that much harder. Why would you work with Marxists actively subverting our Constitution or racists and homophobes who see no one's humanity but their own? We hear every damn day about how fragile our country is on the brink of catastrophe, torn by polarizing hate. And how it's a shame that we can't work together to get things done. But the truth is, we do. We work together to get things done every damn day. The only place we don't is here or on cable TV. Embedded in that message is an equivocation of the right-wing cable news network, Fox, and the one that's on the left, this one, as if we're each equidistant from sanity, each equally to blame for the division Stewart talks about. What are the odds of two cable channels on opposite sides of the political spectrum being exactly the same in every other respect, exactly as bad in dividing the country, exactly as bad in twisting facts, exactly as bad in demonizing religious minorities, exactly as bad in defending the corporatization of the country? What are the odds that a network, this one, which acquired a progressive bent essentially by inadvertence after I took a stand against the Iraq war that is now the definition of mainstream, would be exactly as bad as a network founded by a conservative billionaire who hired a former Nixon campaign man to run it for the express purpose of espousing the same right-wing view of the world that the same company loses millions of dollars a year pushing a failed newspaper with, and which then gave millions of dollars to the Republican Party apparatus this year. Sticking up for the powerless is not the moral equivalent of sticking up for the powerful. Jonathan Alter is, of course, Newsweek Magazine national affairs columnist, MSNBC political analyst. Here's the disclosure. John's wife works on the Colbert Report, and he was a guest on it, correct? That is yeah. correct. Uh, Today, they call tonight. me uh, John Nepotinsky. That's uh, very nice. Put a fresh set of eyes on this for me. Well, in my...
problem with this, this phony equivalence is that it confuses uh, reason and fact on the one hand with emotion and opinion on the other. Now, do we have some emotion and opinion? You're damn on right our we do. Side? <laughs> of course we do. But uh, we, we are f you know, founded in fact and in, in some participation in what one George H.W. Bush aide called the reality-based community. Mm -hmm. So we start there, and then sometimes we'll, you know, go off the rails, and you know, one of the clips that they used at the rally from you, you later apologized for. You were willing to say, you know, we, I went over yes. the top. Yeah. The other network uh, does not do that, at we're least we're owed not a few since very often. There's a few from 1996 uh, they haven't gotten to yet. And to, to me, the, the quintessential example of uh, what's wrong with Fox is that on the question of the president's religion, they time after time after time over a period of years have asked guests, they've had anchors asking guests, uh, do you believe the president is a Muslim? Mm -hmm. As if it's a matter of opinion right. rather than fact. And, and we don't do that here. Uh, you know, if, if, something, if something is legitimately a matter of opinion, then we have plenty of that. But we don't confuse the two. Facts can be stubborn things, or as Pat Moynihan said, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but they're not entitled to their own facts. Why the assumption, and I know Senator Graham arguing against this by what I did with worse persons, but why the assumption that if the good guys stand down, the bullies will too? I never found that to work uh, with actual bullies on the playground. I haven't found it to work in this equation either. Well, that, that's the problem. I mean, this politics is a contact sport. And, and I don't think that, uh, you know, John Stewart has to embrace every eye gouge at the line of scrimmage. But I think he's in a little bit of a tricky position where he gets to take shots in his show. And if they're funny, which they almost always are, mm -hmm. I don't agree with you that he jumped the shark. I think he's still very funny. But that's okay. So it, what he's essentially saying is that when we take shots, that's not okay. Maybe because it's not funny enough and humor is the only standard. So if our barbs were funny enough and got over his funny bar, that therefore they would be okay? Well, Otherwise, what he's saying is it's okay for them to do it, but not for us. But in, in defense of that position, he is a comedian and will, uh, will right. advertise himself as such. Does that, in fact, make a difference? It does make a difference. Um, but for him to you know bring everybody to the mall, not even say, except Tony Bennett was the only one who said, go vote. You know, and then to essentially at the end, after a terrific show, mm -hmm. but at the end to say just one word about the problems in the Capitol and the rest of it is the media's fault, I thought was a, a missed opportunity maybe to focus on what the real problems facing the country are. I don't think that cable news with all of its problems uh, is, the, you know, the source of, 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 of the great menace to America right now. And I think he conveyed that impression a little bit. Something also, he, he also did refer to cable TV, which was sort of, I thought, a funny way to phrase it since he's on cable <laughs> TV. Um, it, the, the equivalence, though, between Fox and this network didn't start with Jon Stewart, didn't start Saturday at all. And perhaps, you know, what I said there was, was over the top because I just heard it so many damn times that it just, it's like, are you actually watching people who see this equivalence? Yeah. Are, have they actually watched any of it? Because Fox right. News has multiple presidential candidates on the payroll. We've got Karl Rove, Dick Mars on the air fundraising, giving addresses. Christine O'Donnell saying Sean Hannity is in, their, in her pocket. They have straight news stories and straight news people uh, talking about the Black Panthers, the acorn videos or the billion dollar backpacks There's something coming out of somebody's orifice every day of the week yeah, over there right. the last time the white house even mentioned rachel maddow or myself it was a compliment for criticizing the president this president not the last one why do we get equated just in the last few years with fox news other than the fact that more or less both both channels were, you know operate in english because uh people are not trying to distinguish between you know completely bs stories like the new black panthers mm -hmm. Which is just they. What two, they do is they'll hype guys. They'll they'll hype a story and then they'll try to get people in the mainstream press to ask the White House about it or ask other mm -hmm. people about it as if it's a legitimate story, which is the game that they've been playing. So people assume that it's even Stephen, and it's much easier as a media frame to say, oh, it's Fox on the right, MSNBC on the left, and CNN in the boring middle. That's a much much 
tidier way of getting your hands around a cable news story to, than to make the, the difficult distinctions about who's telling the truth in a yeah. particular circumstance and who's not. Uh, that's hard, but that's what journalism is supposed to be about, mm -hmm. you know, is making those kinds of distinctions. And I think that we, for all of our faults at MSNBC, we do try much harder to put journalism first than opinionizing second. They put political axe grinding and advancing their Republican Party agenda first and journalism a distant second. Jonathan Alter of Newsweek and MSNBC, thank you kindly. Thanks, Keith.